Hello, my name is Brian Matheson, and I lead the Optical Communications Space Terminal Product Development and Fabrication team at FiberTech. I'm pleased to be at Aerospace's workshop to talk about FiberTech's progress and recent development in optical communications technology. This talk will provide an overview of FiberTech's compact laser comm terminals for CubeSat SmallSat platforms. I'll discuss the compact laser terminals that we are developing for near-Earth, lunar, and deep space environments. For those in the audience that may not be familiar with FiberTech, we're a small aerospace company located in Northern Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. With over 30 years of developing disruptive technologies and systems that enable real-world capabilities for our defense and aerospace customers. FiberTech has a leading reputation for delivering high reliability space lasers, LIDAR, and laser comm systems. Our core competencies are in fielded aircraft and space systems, meeting the performance, swap, and environmental needs of our customers' missions. Our focus is on electro-optic based systems, including high energy bulk and fiber solid state lasers, LIDAR systems and component technologies, and laser communication systems. Our multidisciplinary team includes expertise in all elements of electro-optic system design, analysis, and integration, allowing us to provide cost-effective, scalable, and agile development capabilities. To highlight some of FiberTech's proven space technologies, FiberTech provided the Space Flight Laser for Calypso, a NASA cloud and aerosol LiDAR system that was deployed in 2006 for a three-year mission and is still operating 24-7, 365 days a year for the past 14 years, and is expected to remain active for several more years to come. And for ISAT-2, a NASA altimeter instrument launched in 2018, FiberTech provided the transmit lasers and control electronics, the receiver photon counting electronics, and the start pulse detector for range timing. ISAT-2 has been in operation for over two years and has been generating impressive science data. FiberTech's strategy to developing a multifunction laser comm terminal is to have it be small and low cost. Using a modular design allows us flexibility to function as a multi-purpose laser comm terminal. Our goal is to meet a variety of NASA, DOD, and commercial missions over a wide range of environments and distances. For small platforms that only need occasional communication links, such as a LEO orbiter downloading sensor data to the ground, body pointing can be used for coarse pointing. For a small platform requiring multiple simultaneous links, such as in an inter-satellite ring or mesh network, or platforms where body pointing is not practical, mature TRL-9 gimbal technology is used for coarse pointing. The reason that many of us are here today is that we recognize that there is a rapidly growing need for additional communications capacity in space. And optical comms can provide significant advantages over RF communications with comparable swap. Advantages include narrow beam divergence and large bandwidth, which enables high data rates at long ranges. Covertness and robustness with low susceptibility to jamming or interference due to the narrow beams and currently no limitations on spectrum availability. The challenges to implementing FSO comms include susceptibility to clouds and atmosphere, and this could be managed by having a network of terminals with ground station diversity. And the narrow beam means high directionality, and this is managed by tight pointing controls, including the fine steering by the LCT. FiberTech started developing space laser comm systems more than five years ago leveraging our organizational strengths in lasers, optical transceivers, and flight systems. Initial results of that effort are the LCTs pictured on this slide. These LCTs feature modular designs that can fit within 2U for a CubeSat, OOK or PPM modulation data formats, and beacon-based closed-loop fine steering pointing control. We use high 
efficiency laser transmitters for long range scalability. And there are currently six space LCT units either delivered to customers or work in progress at this time. This chart shows an example of a small sat with a science payload and three FSO terminals installed. Using three LCTs enables two intersatellite crosslinks in a space network while simultaneously allowing for science data collection and space to ground downlink for data offload. With three terminals and gimbal pointing over a hemispherical field of regard, all pointing directions are covered with one hemisphere having double coverage. With an additional terminal, all directions can have double coverage. This is Oracle FiberTech's commercial low earth orbit laser comm terminal configured for LEO to earth downlink operation. It operates at 1.5 micron wavelengths. It has a one gigabit per second downlink rate with a half watt transmit laser power and less than 100 microradian divergence transmit output beam width. It has a 100 megabit uplink data rate and a large 6.4 centimeter receive aperture. It provides greater than 0.1 degree fine steering control. The LCT requires less than 30 watts from a 28 volt unregulated bus supply when operating at the maximum transmit laser power. It has a 2U form factor and weighs 2.6 kilograms. The Oracle LCT features passive and active vibration isolation from platform jitter. It has a fine steering control loop for fast acquisition and precision tracking. And the fine steering mirror control also provides point ahead angle compensation. Output of the beacon tracking system can be used as an input to the core steering control for improved accuracy. The LCT unit is available in standalone modules or for CubeSat integration. The pictures on the top of the slide show the standalone housings. The optical telescope and receive aft optics are packed in a 1U housing suitable for mounting on the outside of the satellite or on a pointing gimbal. The electronics and the transmit EDFA modem transceiver are packaged in a separate 1U housing that can be located internally or near the radiator since this is the module where most of the heat is generated. The picture on the bottom shows a prototype of the 2U form factor that we delivered to a commercial customer and has been integrated into a 6U CubeSat. We currently have an engineering development unit that was provided to NASA and will go undergo range testing very soon. We will also be delivering a flight unit to a commercial customer this quarter. This is Morpheus FiberTech's extended performance terminal that is suitable for operation in a multitude of orbital environments while maintaining a similar form factor to our other terminal. It has a 100 megabit to one gigabit downlink data rate depending on link range. The transmit output laser power has been increased to two and a half watts nominal and it has a narrower beam divergence of less than 55 microradians. These updates extend the range performance and increase the potential data rate capacity at shorter ranges. Morpheus has an uplink receive data rate of 1 to 100 megabits per second depending on range. It uses the same 6.4 centimeter receive aperture. It also has the same fine steering capability as Oracle. Morpheus requires less than 80 watts from a 28 volt unregulated bus supply when operating at the maximum transmit laser power. The Morpheus LCT has several updates for operating in higher radiation environments. It comes in a thicker radiation shielded package, though it is also available without the shielded package for integrating into a standard CubeSat. It also has electronic upgrades for sensing and handling of single event effects, including latch up, and it also comes with higher uh, rated triple E parts. It has all the same pointing and tracking features uh, previously discussed for Oracle. FiberTech has recently completed fabrication of the first prototype Morpheus terminal 
and is in the process of system performance testing. The unit will undergo environmental testing later this year and is scheduled for a spaceflight mission in 2021. Here we show the link budget for inner satellite links using the compact laser terminal. The longer range you can go, the fewer satellites you need in your network, or the more nodes in the network you can access, providing network resiliency. For ISL links, we are using pulse position modulation data format and are using the same terminal on both sides of the link with a 6.4 centimeter telescope aperture diameter, a 55 microradian divergence, and a two watt transmit beam. The link budget shows you can achieve greater than gigabit data rates at five at up to 5,000 kilometers, which is suitable for LEO crosslinks. And you can achieve megabit data rates up to 80,000 kilometers, which is suitable for geo crosslinks. The need for fine steering pointing control on the LCT is driven by the high directionality or narrow beam divergence of the optical beam. It is desirable to control the pointing of the beam to a fraction of its divergence angle to deliver high power to the remote terminal. The pointing accuracy and speed requirements exceed the capabilities of most bus attitude determination and control systems and course pointing mechanisms. And platform jitter requires fast steering for compensation. So fast closed loop tracking is required. To perform closed loop tracking, we use a beacon signal from the remote terminal to provide fast acquisition and maintain accurate pointing. FiberTech's terminal uses a position sensing detector or a focal plane array to capture the pointing error. For shorter range applications, FiberTech uses a position sensing detector, such as a quad cell detector. For longer range applications, an FPA is used because it provides a higher sensitivity. A compact fast steering mirror is included in the optical beam path in the optical head to control the transmit beam direction. When closed loop tracking, required residual pointing error needs to be less than four to 10 microradians, depending on the transmit beam divergence and the link budget allocation. Here's a demonstration of the fine steering control on one of our LCTs pictured in the screen. On the screen is a far field image of the output of the terminal captured on a laboratory camera while we simulate platform jitter by shaking a laboratory mirror. In the absence of a detected beacon from the remote terminal simulator, the signal is pointing in the wrong direction and is moving all around. When the beacon signal is turned on, the LCT control loop locks on and the fine steering mirror stabilizes the output. The control loop improves jitter three to five times and improves residual jitter to less than three microradians. FiberTech was recently selected by NASA to advance optical comms technology for small sets around the moon and beyond in support of the Artemis mission to put people on the moon by 2024. Our lunar network optical terminal will relay vast amounts of data from the lunar orbiters and landers to Earth. Optical comms terminals provide redundant paths from the lunar surface and orbiters to provide a robust lunar communications network. The compact LCTs provide similar performance to other NASA communication systems at a fraction of the swap and cost. FiberTech's l not terminals will be highly reliable. Our initial current base estimate for the system fit is less than 2000, which is consistent with a seven to 10 year mission lifetime. It is in our technology roadmap to further improve the reliability of the terminals for greater than 10 year mission lifetime to support lunar and beyond missions requiring longer lifetimes. High power optical amplifiers are an important component in FSO communication systems, as well as LIDAR transmitters for earth science ranging and altimeter applications. So we've placed a high priority on maturing these products. 
FiberTech has developed high reliability 1.5 micron erbium doped fiber based amplifiers in a wide variety of configurations. The most compact versions at a half a watt to three watts output power is packaged for interoperability in a CubeSat or Space VPX satellite architecture and are used in our compact LCTs. The 10 20 watt versions have compact standalone packaging and can be used to amplify single or multiple wavelengths. We are also working on a 50 watt amplifier, which is well suited for high capacity geo-based terabit networks or for long range WDM gigabit operation from deep space. I wanna mention a few of the ongoing subsystem development efforts that are currently in progress at FiberTech. FiberTech is working on incorporating high TRL gimbal actuators into our optical module to provide spacecraft independent course pointing. We are also developing a software defined optical modem that supports low complexity OOK and CCSDS compliant serially concatenated PPM waveforms. The waveform agility enables the terminal to support a wide scope of interoperability with other systems. It also allows for link optimization across a range of missions and link conditions. The modem prototype board has been designed and fabricated. It has hardware in place to support sub nanosecond time transfer for assured PNT. The modem and transceiver card design updates are in process to support the lunar and beyond missions. Firmware implementations and functional testing will be completed in 2021. In summary, FiberTech has a long history and leading reputation for engineering reliable lasers, LiDAR sensors, and laser comm systems for space. We've designed a low swap modular laser comm terminal for bidirectional laser communications that is well aligned to current and emerging needs. Thank you for your attention.